The rugby league really was my life, my passion, and my dream. So I was lucky enough to have a few games for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, and, but in 1994, I suffered a number of major injuries, and one of those was uh, I needed a major knee reconstruction. And so really that put an end to my playing days. I uh, applied to coach the South Sydney Junior Rep teams, the under 16s, 18s and under 20s and uh, started a career as a coach and was really making progress in that. I was then invited to be on the coaching staff of the under 19s and the under 20s Junior State of Origin teams and really um, my ambition was to coach in the NRL but something happened that changed my life. When I first got saved in the Parramatta Potters Christian Church, I remember sitting there, I was coming down off drugs, my, my mind was all messed up, and here I was sitting at the back of the church, and Pastor Walsh is up there, he's, he's preaching a, a message, and God spoke to me and said, I've called you to, to be a preacher, to be just like that man. And at that point, I, I remember thinking to myself and saying to God, God, you know what, you've got the wrong guy here. You know, I'm all messed up and this will never happen, but it has. So it's unbelievably about almost two years uh, since we stepped out to go to China. And uh, the decision to go, it came upon me very suddenly. My mind was absolutely racing with questions and with answers. And those were all questions about why not? And it wasn't so much that I didn't know the overall will of God, but finding yourself in the will of God, finding, uh, you know, where I fit into that, you know. It's God's will to plant churches and it's God's will to send missionaries, but was that going to be God's will for me? And uh, I guess in some ways I discounted that in the past because I was settled with what God was doing in my life in Blacktown. And so we were moving from a stable situation into what might have seen a, seemed like an unpredictable uh, or an open-ended situation. But, you know, God's will is the most stable, secure place that you could possibly be. There is such a peace there. And my wife had gotten saved and was praying for me and invited me to come to church. And on the 17th of December, 2000, I got radically saved. Jesus touched my life. And very quickly from that point on, I felt a real passion and an ambition. And I really felt the call of God upon my life. At that point, I had to make a decision whether I was going to pursue uh, the will of God and the calling of God in my life or whether I was going to pursue a career in the NRL and coaching and all that the world had to offer. The three most important lessons I've learned serving God, well, the first one would be, is that God will help you, God will encourage you, but God won't push you into the realm of faith. At some point, you're gonna to have to step out in stone cold faith and belief. Certainly this was true for me in the arena of calling. For a long time, I was waiting for God to send a plane right in the sky, Scott, you're called, and he never did that. Instead, what happened was, is that I determined, God, I'm gonna pursue this. I feel it's the right thing to do. I feel it's what you want for my life. And if I'm wrong, you're going to have to show me. And it was just a short time after that, when I made that decision, that God opened the door for me to go into Victoria Park and pastor the church there in Western Australia. At first, I uh, felt stirred to go into the city of Auburn, Lidcombe. Due to building difficulties, uh, uh, Pastor Walsh called us one day with an opportunity 
just step up into the area of Strathfield to take over an opportunity there, a, a building. And there after a year, over a year and a half, again, we received the call from Pastor Walsh of an opportunity to step out into the area of Windsor. There was a need in the area there. And you know, the decision to be available to the things of God and the will of God at a drop of a hat was you know, something my wife and I had discussed previously and decided that we would always be available to the will of God, the need, the cause. And so at that point, here it is where we're settled in the heart and the city of Stratford and yet Windsor is you know, an, a, an hour out towards the end of the country. It's a small city and, and so, you know, uprooting our family and moving again, we, you know, we've just been settled in and here it was, we've, we've stepped up to the call and gone into the great city of Windsor. The end of 2011 and, and Jane and I were getting ready to leave Darwin and move to Sydney to start a pioneer church at the next March conference. It was Sunday night and Pastor Neil asked us to come into his office and have a chat with him. So we sat down and, and he said, there's an opportunity that's become available in Maryland. I need somebody to take over there as the pastor and we think that you can do it. So I, I'd like to say that you know, I was able to say, let's do it, let's believe God, let's go. But I didn't know what to say. While I was in Victoria Park, I had the opportunity to preach in Indonesia. I couldn't figure out whether I was called to be a missionary or not, but I remember shortly after getting together with a friend of mine, Pastor Craig Newton. And we were talking about how there was a great need in Indonesia, and there was also a great opportunity. And we hatched a plan that we would go or we'd present the idea of going as two families that could support one another and encourage one another. We organised to have fellowship with the uh, leader of the Australian Fellowship at the time and uh, invited him over for a barbecue. We called it the Barbecue of Destiny. And uh, so we fed him steak and uh, we talked about the idea that we had and he said it was an interesting plan. He said it was unlikely, uh, but he would think about it over the next 12 months. It was less than uh, six months later, we were at a conference, and he came up to us out of the blue and said, let's do this. Everybody's got a blank page, a story they're writing today, a wall that they're climbing. You can carry the past on your shoulders. You can start over regrets, no matter what you've gone through, Jesus. He gave it all to save you. He carried the cross on his shoulders, so you can start over. Don't let your heart be troubled, don't be afraid To the broken hearted, their wishes paid Never been born, never been torn, never sinned, never disobeyed I know you think there's no hope, no, but that ain't true Jesus saved, I know you feel a regret, like I Brought this all on myself, like I Messed it up big time and this time I don't deserve God's help Thinking, how can God forgive me? After knowing what I hid, Penny. After knowing that I hid from him and I stayed away and backslid. Listen, Jesus came for the sick. So true. Jesus came for the weak. Amen. Jesus came to give good news and to set the captives free. Amen. Listen, Jesus came for the poor. Amen. Jesus came with the keys. Amen. Jesus came to remove the chains so of the prisoners. Every has got a blank page, a story that in the ocean floor run to his arms like an open door god the father sent the sons i'm making come and be free and gotta run no That's more he's come doing. to me all who are weary with heavy burdens i'll give you rest separating you from your sin as far as the east is from the he west said. thrown in a sea of forgetfulness what sin what offense and when them waves come crashing in i'll calm the winds in your defense so whatever said. it is that you've done he put that punishment on his son his you'll son. never come under his condemnation conquer sin and satan and his accusations so dry your eyes lift up your head Hallelujah. Plus he gave us his peace, his peace. And he took our guilt on a cross instead. Took 
our place and now we embrace a clean slate with the eyes of fate. We do unfailing love, unfailing love. Everybody's it's not too late, start off. A story that In 2006, we decided that we were going to go and pioneer. We were planted out of the Parramatta Church at the very first Sydney conference. And I really felt inspired to go and pioneer in Windsor. And when uh, God spoke to me about Windsor, I said, man, this really must be God. I, uh, I barely traveled across Anzac Parade, uh, let alone go to Windsor. It was completely unexpected. Uh, I was fully anticipating moving to a new city, finding a house, finding a job, getting settled, looking for a building, starting to work with people. And now it's a case of taking over a fully functioning church with a full calendar, uh, with real people in it, real needs and, and real expectations. And I'm looking at myself and my B-grade preaching, my lack of pastoral skills, and I'm 23 years old, and, and to be honest, what I was thinking was, I don't know if I can do this. This leads to lesson two, and that is that there are critical times where you need to say yes to God and leave the results to Him. Because now that I had the opportunity to go to Indonesia, I have to admit I was having second thoughts. I, I just bought a house, we were buying a house. Uh, I had three young children, the church was going very well, I'd gone part time. And I felt like when I would put up my hand, I would kind of painted myself into a corner. But the reality is that once you've said yes to God, second thoughts are immaterial. So arriving in China, things were so new and we caught ourselves over the next numbers of weeks and uh, we would just look at each other. Uh, I'd look at Louise and she'd look at me or, and we, we'd say, we're in China. And it's like, whoa, you know, who'd have thought, you know, Catherine famously would uh, come to some beautiful avenue that maybe had red lanterns and, you know, a gateway with, uh, with some ornate gateway. And she'd go, oh, it's just like Chinatown. It's like, honey, it is Chinatown. We are overseas. And so, you know, I mean, that, that was revelation and just thinking, you know, gosh, we're in the most populous nation in the world. We're in this incredible adventure. And then it would dawn on you, how are we going to do anything? How are we going to get an apartment? How are we going to shop for food? And so we sold most of our stuff and in 2001 we went to Indonesia. Being a missionary was an amazing experience. Some of the standout memories for me was just the support we received from the fellowship to send us there and to keep us there, to continue, that we could continue to live there. The impact teams that came for us, the pastors that came for us, the opportunity to live in a completely different culture. Indonesia is like living on another planet compared to living in Australia. The crowds, the lifestyle, the poverty next to the incredible wealth. It was just amazing to see all that. And for my young family to experience just a totally different life, to see that firsthand, and I know for them and for me, it's just stayed with us all these years. The opportunity to see God move at, a, in an, at an entirely different level and help us. Uh, and also just uh, the, the, the disciples, the, the members of that congregation who are still precious to Anna and I to this day. I went up to the prayer room and I didn't know what to pray. So I opened my Bible and started reading Psalms. And I read Psalm 84, five. It says, blessed is he 
whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. And I'm telling you, when I read that, God spoke to me so clearly. And he said, you're only here for a short amount of time. You're passing through this life. What are you going to do this side of eternity? And I knew, I knew that we can't miss this. We're not gonna miss this. And that scripture has become a reference point for me to understand I'm passing through this life. I'm, I'm supposed to be a pilgrim. What am I going to do for the kingdom of God? So I went to my pastor and said, yeah, absolutely, we'll do it. On and on and on him, rose from the grave on Sunday morning. Jesus, son of God, they call him Alpha Omega, number for him. Blessed, he the best, not a prophet can test. How many prophets have said that they rose up in three days from the dead? Come on. Devil better stop now, get my word out, yeah. it's a lot now. Say Tanya things get flopped now. It's a rap, Christ is on top now. We live in a war zone, speaking in tongues like I'm praying in Morse code. Who is Jehovah? I'm like a soldier. Then I get that monkey off of your shoulder. Step up in the club with the holy persona. Christ is the light, I'm the candle holder. No one ain't ready for the supernova. So I make tracks like I'm in Daytona. Time to roll out. Step out, no fear, no doubt. Open up your mouth, tell it to the crowd. Sound the trumpet real loud. Look up on the clouds, it's the Son of God. Whether you believe in the Lord or not. And he won't stop until he's got heaven, earth, and his enemies unlocked. Let the trumpet sound, let the people praise him. He's alive, Jesus is alive. Look out, I'm gonna put the word out. Let the earth rejoice, every generation. He's alive, oh. Jesus is alive, Jesus is alive. Oh. Alive, alive, alive. Remember me, I went to Tennessee When I came home, no messages was on my phone But am I gonna moan? No, Christ is still on the throne Jesus, also known as I am Chilling with the Father at the right hand The right man for the job Who better to save the world than the Son of God? He the rock, the top of top, you can't stop, stop, won't stop That's why nobody rose up on the third day Come and drink to the first day Sweeter than strawberry Kool-Aid No denying, yes I need Christ Plastic whip, Tim Hank up to your stripes But he's alive, word is wrong, can't wait I'm a get it on wow. Let the trumpet sound Let the people praise him He's alive Jesus is alive Look out, I'm gonna put the word out Let the earth rejoice Ain't for babies, don't fall into that, lose the trap, it's a wrap. Once you're in the cemetery, you can't jump like Woody Harrison and Wesley. Let's see, nobody found the bones of Jesus, car the tomb was empty. Rolled out like a Bentley, rose up though we took more blows than gently. Jesus died to free us, more stripes on the back than Adidas. We should thank God, really, he don't need us. While we were sinners, he came to reach us. Now all we just need to do is turn from the old light into Eunice. We can do this, quit stalling. Do you know that the Lord is... Let the trumpet sound, let the people praise him. He's alive, my Lord and Jesus is alive. Let the earth rejoice, every generation. He's alive, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive.
after spending three years pioneering in Windsor, Pastor Walsh had invited me to come on staff in Parramatta. In that period of time, many people asked me, so what are you going to do? What, what do you feel called to do? I really felt inspired by God to be a disciple-making, church-planting pastor. And I didn't feel called to be a missionary. I don't feel called to be an evangelist. I felt called to be a disciple-making, church-planting pastor. In 2013, I had the privilege of taking over the Hurstville Church. It's a busy church, uh, Bible study leaders, uh, Bible hour, Sunday school, a great program. And God really began to move uh, in the next uh, season of time. God brought in people. The church doubled in numbers. Uh, we, uh, we had Bible study leaders rise up. God was re really accelerating uh, all that uh, He wanted to do there. And I really felt a sense of God's will coming to pass as we as a church began to step up and step into all that God has for us. One of the things that we battled against in the spiritual realm is just a spirit of fear because we go there to a foreign country, a country where we're told, you know, you're going to have to be careful and, you know, that, that uh, a missionary, you're, you're not welcome and you could uh, risk ending all of this that you believe to be the will of God with just a, a mistake or a, a faux pas or something like that. But we've seen God move, you know. I went out to a university campus, prayed beforehand and said, God, I need someone who can speak English and has the time to stop and talk. And I just walked around saying ni hao to everyone, you know, I was just the hello guy. Hi, hello, hello. Just looking for that engagement, what, what has God got? And I uh, came across a young lady named Betty with some of her friends and uh, started to talk with her about getting together and practicing English. Met another guy, Alan, while we were swimming for fitness at the local swimming pool. And he said he wanted to start an English corner. He said, I w I'm not bold enough, but I'd like to do it. I said, well, I'm bold enough, let's do it. And, uh, and we started off meeting at McDonald's with just a couple of people. We now have 225 contacts on our social media contact list for the English corner. Thankfully, they don't all come at once, but, uh, but we have consistent turnaround and contact with people and a, and a good pool of people that we can, uh, that we can share the gospel with. And... Windsor was a real great time of spiritual growth for myself, my wife and our children. And, you know, here, the great city of Windsor, it was a comfortable place to live. We, we fell in love with the place. We had a wonderful house and you know, our daughter Zoe was turning five, Annalise was you know, two years old and Zoe was about to start kindergarten. And, you know, it's a great rural area to bring up a family and you know, great comfortable conditions. Yet again, uh, Pastor Walsh came to us and said, uh, you know, there's, there's a need, would you be available? And here it was, God was bringing in the, the challenge of would we be available? We'd made a commitment to God that we would go that we would be available, and then we stepped into the city of Bankstown. Saying yes to God has been a critical lesson, but it leads me to a third lesson, and that is that you're only as good as your last act of obedience. There was a, I've been talking to the Hornsby Church for a long time about the plan one day to become a full-time pastor. But early this year, God began to deal with me about actually doing it. And that meant leaving a very comfortable government job, which I was working part-time. The church was supporting me part-time. I remember at the time we had a revival with evangelist Daniel Anderson. I'm sure he preached great, but I can't remember what he was preaching because all I could hear was the voice of God saying, when are you going to go full-time? Will you just go full-time? And so I called my pastor and I talked to him about it. He didn't try to talk me out of it. I, I, I talked to the leaders of our church and we decided let's go for this, let's do it. For my wife and I, this was our fourth move in five years into the city of Bankstown. One of the great things about ministry is the love and support of 
a wife and family. And yeah, God has blessed me with, with Paula, uh, who has you know, her own personal relationship with God, surrendered to God. But when we entered into this marriage, uh, you know, we sat down and we talked about the will of God. And you know, the great thing about Paula and is that it, at a drop of a hat, you know, would support all that God has you know, for our lives as a couple, as a family, whether that be into another city of Sydney or whether that would be into a, a nation overseas. You know, we made a decision together that as a couple that we would do the will of God at whatever cost. It's just a constant thing, the idea of stepping up. You know, you've got to step up for every opportunity. It's, a, it, it's not a, you know, we stepped up back a couple of years ago, but step up to the next challenge. Move up to that and, and in, in doing so, you know, stepping out in faith to, to just try something, to speak, to, to explore that, uh, you know, and, and find the will of God.
Fast forward about 18 months, I'm sitting at an outreach event with a bunch of guys from the church. And these men, they're, they're tattooed, they're ex-thugs. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, how did I end up here? How did I get here? I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a naive white guy from Darwin. How, how did this all happen? How did I wind up in this place? And I still ask the same question today. And the only answer I've got is that we chose to believe God and, and filled with insecurity and not sure how it's all going to work out, but chose to believe God. And I look back and think about all that we would have missed if I'd missed that opportunity, all that we would have forfeited if, if I'd, I'd balked at the opportunity God presented us with. And I'm so glad that we chose to believe God. Since taking over the church in Hurstville, I really felt a passion and a burden to continue the mandate of that church uh, and the legacy of that church, which had been church planting. And last year, we um, were able to plan out a church. We planted David and Doreen Sinclair uh, into the city of Campsie, and they're there um, pioneering and laboring away. And uh, we are looking forward to all that God is going to do. Uh, in the next few years, we, we're not finished yet. Uh, we want to plant more churches. We want to be involved in the gospel mandate, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we can't wait to see what God is going to do in the coming years. It's great that after some time of doing this, you know, we get the Bible out at the end of our English corner and, and you know, people are uh, helping each other, unsaved people are helping each other to find the Bible reference, you know? They, oh, no, no, this way for Corinthians. No, they go that way and you can look in there and this is how you find it. And so that's just a great thing to be putting into people. But we'll bring this Bible lesson and then ask people, was there any vocabulary that, uh, any words that you don't understand or, or you, you want clarified? And we've had just precious moments, like, you know, someone will raise their hand. Can you explain to me redemption? It's like, oh, I would love to explain redemption to you. It's been a, a precious thing to see souls saved, to be able to baptize people in our little inflatable kiddie pool in the building. And, uh, and it's just an amazing blessing. But just to see how God can present an opportunity to share the gospel and uh, where you're up against language and culture and everything is so different. But the Bible works and God favours us when we give ourselves to preaching the gospel. God will help you, God will encourage you, but God won't push you into the realm of faith. At some point you're going to have to step out in stone cold faith and believe. Discipleship, evangelism, church planting, it's something we're all involved in and all participate in, but it all involves risk. And whatever God is calling you to do, whatever God has inspired you to do, you'll never regret stepping up, out, and into the will of God for your life.